Welcome, welcome back, welcome back all my astrology friends for another video about the full moon in Capricorn. And yes, there were people when I was making the full moon on the 22nd of June, the full moon video on uh, uh, that was also in Capricorn. People was like, Vila, what are you doing? Uh, this is too early. It's not the full moon yet. And, uh, you know, a lot of critics. And it's incredible, isn't it? That um, one day I, I was, I used to be like that as well. I used to be critical as well, you know, but always around the stuff that I knew, knew things about, around, but not when I don't know anything about something or a small amount of something and being critical. That's being stupid. <clears throat> I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. It's not stupid. It's arrogant. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to this video and um, the second full moon indeed in Capricorn. How on earth is that possible? Well, it's possible because the one on the 22nd of June was at one degree of Capricorn and the one now on the 21st of July is at the very end of Capricorn, 29 degrees of Capricorn. And this is a whole, a whole other story around this full moon that we're having. So this video is about that. What is this all about in general, collective? And then for the 12 signs, what area of our lives are going to, to feel that energy? But also, I'm going to mention something about Mars for each and every 12 signs, because this is a, a, a very kind of active and in a positive way, a very transformative kind of full moon. I'll tell you why. And I want to break this down. There's a lot of aspects going on. So I want to be, you know, I always want to, you know, if I would view this video, I would love it that people are very, you know, concise and precise and not too long, not too messy. And I do very much my best to not be that. Although in the beginning I was very messy, wasn't I? But I forgive myself. I hope you do, you do too. But um, this is serious business, this full moon in Capricorn. What is it all about? Well, if there is one word that I can use for this full moon to describe it, it's powerful, taking powerful actions after powerful uh, revelations, you could say, after powerful things that become very clear and especially things that were a bit under the surface, right? It's Pluto after all. So what we're going to have around the 21st of July is the sun, of course, at the very end of Cancer, 29 degrees, and it's going to oppose the moon at the very end of Capricorn, 29 degrees. But who's there so close to the moon? Exactly. It's Pluto. Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius, so it's just one degree away of that moon. And that makes it a very platonic story. And uh, Pluto is, is, is always a challenge. Not going to lie, it's always a challenge. But the thing is, with this full moon, there's a lot of support. There's a lot of trines going on that support this full moon. So it's always interesting to look at the astrology as a whole, you know, like a true Sagittarian to look at the helicopter view and not just that one detail because otherwise people freak out. So this full moon here in Capricorn, between Cancer and Capricorn, just like the full moon that we had, is again about balance. It's about balance between the work life balance, you could say, for many, many people. I, I'm talking in general now. It's a lot about that balance and restoring it, you know, especially when it was like this or like this, you're going to restore that balance between not too much work, not too much just sitting home and chilling, but a bit both of them. Those responsibilities, you know, Cancer and Capricorn are cardinal signs. They want to establish something in this world so um but with this flavor this is about revealing something that was not known before that's typical pluto and it's also typical that it could have been suppressed so 
Yes, that gives the challenge because sometimes it's a typical energy. And depending on where this moon is falling in your chart, it's the typical energy of when you suppress something um, because you don't want to face it, which is the negative side of Pluto. If you're suppressing someone, something or someone uh, and you don't want to face it, it's going to, to demand so much energy and you're going to force that. And by suppressing it, you know, like it's almost like a balloon. You're, you're putting it into water and it demands effort to do that. And when you let go, the balloon comes up and it is shown. And uh, the more we suppress it, the easier uh, it is to get frustrated, the easier it is to get fearful. So bottom line here, the best advice that I can give you is to let go of the things that are out of your control. Now, the, to say that to a moon Pluto person, for instance, in their natal chart, uh, the moon Pluto person will get angry with you. And uh, they will say, yeah, but hey, uh, um, I can control the things that are out of my control or it's still because it's so compulsive. Um, and with compulsive, it's like stronger than you. You are still trying to control it. Now, that's the whole thing. That's the whole team of this to not control the things and to be very mindful of what is out of your control. And what do you have to do? To do that, it's trusting. So the big thing here of this full moon is the trust. The trust in yourself, the trust in the universe, that even if things will be out of control, that it will work out for you and everyone involved for the better. Because that's the power of the universe. So you can do a lot of, of mindful work here. And especially the days before this full moon, you can really try to do what you can do, of course, in situations where you do have some control, but really focus on, look, I'm going not to resist because the stronger you resist, the stronger it persists. It's like your hands on the steering wheel. When you're too tight, it, it, it gives problems, right? It can give you a crisis, namely, uh, you can have those accidents right? And um, I don't want to be that dramatic, you know, the moon is in Capricorn. So this is not about drama. But the moon Pluto is about emotional, um, you know, emotional stuff that is very deep. And when it comes to the surface, and when you're seeing that things are breaking down, no, center yourself and know that there is a reason for that. And that after this, when crisis come up, there's always new situations presenting themselves. And especially if you let go, because then you get in that flow energy. When you trust, Moon Pluto is absolutely the opposite of flow. So, um, but the highest level of Moon Pluto is flow, strangely enough. So, uh, and it's like the universe almost forcing you to get into that flow. So, very interesting energy and not an energy to mess around with. And uh, so if you're welcoming it, if you're welcoming things to be known, things to be to the surface, things that were hidden, emotions, feelings, vulnerabilities. The moon in Capricorn doesn't want to be vulnerable, but with Pluto, it's going to be. And if you allow that, you will see the other side. You will see the strength of that vulnerability and going through the fear. So lots of people will emotionally be, te be tested. And when they go emotionally through those barriers of fear, then the transformation comes. The transformation doesn't come with the moon Pluto by walking around the fear, by avoiding the fear, by, you know, fight, flight, freeze. It's, it's not going to happen. It's going to happen when you go through it. So two words are very important for this full moon. It's trust and it's courage. And that comes from within. You can only trust yourself at a certain level and trust the universe that things will work out.
how they're supposed to work out. And you know what it does? It humbles people. You know, because sometimes we do think, and especially people who are studying astrology, they think that they're gods, right? They think they're, and that's a negative way of using astrology. If you really want to do it for uh, your best interest, for your ego, you will, you will be tested for sure. But if you're doing it in a positive way, if you're saying to yourself, look, this is very stressful energy, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to face my fears and I'm going to stay strong. And even if I don't, you know, I accept that. It's a lot about acceptance as well. Then you go through the transformation. You're not going, a lot of people like transformation, right? They say, oh, transformation, fantastic. But a lot of people forget that there is a, um, a symbolic dying that is going on with the transformation. It's that surrendering, that letting go, that petit mort, they say, you know, in French, they say that. It's very platonic. They associate that with the orgasm, you know, it's the, the letting go and all of that. It's a bit like that. Energy is a bit like that. Um, I just want to make it a bit more funny than it is. But anyways, now, so where is it in your life that you know you know, this is stuff that you know. This is not Uranus. This is not like, oh, out of the blue, something happens. I didn't know that this could happen. No, this is stuff that you know. This is stuff that you have. we all have buried in a way in that particular area of our lives. And now it's the time to clear it up, so to speak. So for those of you who love that, there's a lot of clearing up. There's a lot of strengthening and becoming a, a stronger version of yourself for sure. If you're interested in that, if you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you probably are, because that's a bit like what this channel is all about. It's strengthening by, by knowledge and it's strengthening by understanding the position of the planets. And um, the other thing that is so important and so positively um, in the sky represented that it's helping us is a beautiful trine to Mars. Mars will then, uh, it will just have been over Uranus, but uh, jumping into the sign of uh, Gemini, and that's going to make a trine to Pluto. So although this opposition, the moon as well is going to trine to Mars. And that is a positive thing because that means there becomes clarity and what, what's going on with your actions is in a trine, which means powerful, powerful, transformative actions and rational because it's in air signs. And I really, really love that. So I'm going to look at the position of the moon, where that is for you and for every sign. And I'm going to look at Mars, where it is, where you can make rational, grounding actions. I really, really love this full moon. Again, if you're someone who loves to put your head in the sand, uh, you know, but I mean, you're here, right? I mean, you're watching this video, you're probably not. And I'm not saying that like, oh, my viewers, they are very. No, it's really when you want to be conscious, you can't go backwards in your consciousness, right? When you know, you know. So um, and the actions of us are going to be in, in the mastered Mars trine Pluto it's one of my favorite favorite aspects because it's such a mastery of your actions it's such a such a a certain assertion it's <laughs> it's such an assertion for sure and I mean with an assertion that you're not going over the top and being arrogant you know, because things are revealed here and you're not going to let people walk all over you either you're going to have those energies of moving forward in in a very transformative way and i really really like that about this uh about this full moon another thing i like is actually when it comes to our mental state mercury is square to uranus during all of this so uranus in um taurus at the end of taurus mercury will be uh at the end of uh, leo so yes, it's stressful because uh, it's a bit of nervousness and a bit of, uh, you could say, we're going to have maybe grandiose ideas. and But in a positive way, it's having those insights. It's having those aha moments. It's having those 
euh, ah, avant la lettre, uh, I know what's going on here, I see things in a different perspective. Um, it's, it's really uh, that kind of energy that can help us to make uh, those very, very strong and powerful changes that are driven by emotion, yes, but the moon trining Mars is like positive emotion. It's like in a positive way that even if you have a, an emotion that is challenging, in a trine to Mars, it means that you can make something out of it in a positive way towards your actions, which is lovely as well. Another beautiful aspect, the moon working in a positive angle with that Mars. It's, it's really a very powerful, emotionally driven actions that are not just out of the blue and, and without any uh, thought, not at all, very rational and emotional at the same time, which is very passionate as well. This is passionate energy for sure. Now, um, the sun also trines Neptune, which can also mean that, so the sun is at the end of Cancer, it's trining Neptune, that there is empathy involved here. There is empathy in whatever situation that we are going to find ourselves. There's empathy involved. There's understanding involved. There is connection involved, that we know that we are an element of the whole and that we are all in this together. The two benefics, Venus and Jupiter, are also sextiling each other. Again, nice energy, very, uh, uh, you could say, uh, friendly energy. And that's going to help us as well to, when it comes to relationships, to see the best out of it rather than, you know, the glass is full rather than the glass is empty. So it's not all doom and gloom, but um, it's uh, definitely also that... Don't forget that Jupiter square Saturn aspect that is going on as well. So the ruler of this full moon is Saturn and it's getting, it's uh, applying that uh, square aspect of Jupiter. So Saturn is also tested here by Jupiter and Jupiter is tested by Saturn. And this is simply that balance between the new and the old. So there's going to be things together. So whatever breaks down, or whatever comes, not for all of us, of course, for some people, it's just something that becomes clear and uh, that people know, okay, I have to stick to this, but I have to expand this. It's nothing more or nothing less. It's about expansion and at the same time, holding and stability and, and uh, understanding what you can keep. So what an energy this is, for sure, in the midst of... Uh, of July. Let's have a look very quickly, very quickly, and so that you know where that energy is um, is applying for you. When you are in Aries, this full moon is again in the 10th house of work and career, and if you don't have a work or, or a career, it's how you profile yourself to others, to society, it's your parents. That's something that is revealing itself. Now, where to take action, it's in the third house. So this is going to help you out. Your ruler, Mars, in the third house, in Gemini, is about um, doing lots of things. Doing lots of things, communicating a lot, doing lots of sales, PR, communication, doing things in the neighborhoods, doing some short trip. Uh, a lot of busyness, actually, that uh, can help you. So for those of you who have your own business, that could be revealing something that, especially if you're, you have tried to suppress it, you can really help yourself by being very busy and by doing things in um, a little bit of energy here, a little bit of energy there, it seems scattered, but it's the best way because it's Mars in Gemini. So very much work-related for you. Um, to, fantastic if you have your own business because you can do that switch in communication that is very, very wicked and very, very fast. Taurians, this is all about travel. It's in your ninth house, the house of travel. So something could come up there that you cannot have no control over. It can also mean studies for some of you. It can also mean when you're publishing, when you're editing, when you're teaching, learning, traveling, 
your mindset as well, something comes up. And Mars is in the second house. So what's going to help you is to, to work and to make sure that you hold, you, you own your value. So stick to your values. Mars in the second house is about mobilizing yourself for improving your financial situation, for improving your work, improving your job, for making sure that you stay confident. That's going to help you in that situation. Gemini's, this is happening in your eighth house. So this is the house of life and death. This is the house of psychological deep stuff. So something can come up here. But the thing is, Mars is in your sign. So actually, you have all the energy, whatever it is that's going to happen. And it can be something very positive. It can be, for instance, um, a birth in, um, that is happening. Um, and that demands a lot of your energy to, to do different things in a new way as well and keeping the old together with the new. But for lots of you, this is psychological stuff that might come up. And Mars in your first house means boundaries, right? So in relationships, this is the moment to restore healthy boundaries for sure. Cancerians, this is all relationship stuff. Relationship, relationship. The seventh house of yours is your relationship sector. So if you're in a relationship, something comes up here might come up that um, was hidden or whatever, some, something that comes up here. Now, what is the trick? Mars in the 12th house. Mars in the 12th house, the trick is to your intentions to and the things that you do to kind of prepare yourself when Mars will be in your sign the next month. So it's a lot about not revealing your intentions fully and not to be secretive, not at all, but just to make sure that you know what you're doing and that you um, also meditation. I, I've said it many times to the Cancerians with that 12th house, meditation, calmness, rest. Although it will not be easy for you with Mars in the 12th house to be quiet and restful, but the thing is to prepare things behind the scenes and uh, not tell everyone what you're up to. That's basically the best that you can do um, to help yourself and uh, the ones involved. Leos, this is your sixth house. So something might come up with work, with your health, with your day-to-day -day routines. That is a bit stressful. But what to do is being very active with your goals and with your friends. So Mars in the 11th house, what's going to help you is to be the initiator of a project with friends or um, working very strongly on your future with new goals, with a new transformative mindset towards your future goals. Virgos, this is in your fifth house. So for you, your fellow earth sign. So this is lovelier for you than most other signs you together um, with the Taurians. Now, the fifth house is something might come up when it comes to your hobbies, the things that you love to do, um, romance, your children, something may come up. Now, the thing to do to get out of that, um, uh, you could say, stress is to work. Mars in the 10th house. It is to work to focus on that, to focus on improving your work. If you're not working, to focus on how you present yourself to the world in the most positive way and doing actions for the collective and also with your interactions with your parents, that as well. Librans, this is happening in the core, the core of your chart, which is the fourth house. So that could be the home life balance is definitely something that might be um, triggered here. Let's put it that way. What's going to help you is to stay mindful and your mindset. Mars in the ninth house. Go travel if you can. Go uh, um, go read a good book. Uh, a um, go to a cultural event. Read something metaphysical. Your connection with the divine and your belief, your positive belief can help you to make through this period. 
Scorpios, this is happening in your third house, which is typical to, to get a message that is a bit upsetting or you delivering a message to someone else that is quite, you know, that was bubbling up information that you have been suppressing for a long time and you get that outburst. Now, what's going to help you is Mars in the eighth house. It's having control over the things that are your fears and your mostly your imaginative fears, how to face them and how to tackle them. You have a lot of energy here to tackle that in a very positive way. Also, it could mean to do some actions behind the scenes, not to be very um, that you say I'm going to be secretive, but just behind the scenes that you're preparing yourself um, for things that you need to do by yourself or with others. It could also mean that you're going to be very active with someone else around your resources to improve that. Sagittarius, that's the second house. This is all about your values that could be coming up that is uh, taking that out of balance in some way. Your values or um, money as well. Now, Pluto and money, it's a bit of a weird thing. Sometimes it can even mean a windfall, but it can also mean something, you know, that breaks down before it breaks through. So it depends on what you did before that. If you've done a lot of stuff before you, um, and of course, Pluto is at the very uh, beginning of your um, third house and, and uh, the moon is in the second house. So Pluto has been already uh, through the second house. So a lot of Sagittarians have already improved their financial situation, tried to make it healthier, to make it from the root uh, those can have a big windfall here. Um, on another level, it can simply mean that last push, that last push that maybe it's the last month that you have to do um, a repay of a loan or something. And it's that last month, those last pieces that are quite stressful. But the thing is, be very active in your connections with your Mars is in the seventh house, with your clients, with your business partner, with your partner. Be very active with them um, and, we're, and in a positive way, working through these things, do new things together, be very active together, and that's going to help you out. Capricorn, the whole intro is for you. This is happening in your first house, especially if you're a very late-born Capricorn, having planets around 28, 29 degree of Capricorn, you, can, you will feel this very strongly. This is you. Something is revealed here. It's also relationships. Your relationships, here comes this um, fully honest, blunt, authentic self. And that is a good thing. So don't push that away. What can help you is work. Mars in the sixth house, it's work. It's doing your routines, making sure that you're doing a bit of this and a bit of that, making sure that you're keeping track with your health, that you're working on it very strongly to improve it and to fix little problems here and there. And that's going to help you out. Aquarians, this is happening in the 12th house. So something is revealed here around things that are hidden from you, which is the unconscious, which is your blind spots. And of course, most people, I mean, 80%, maybe 90% of people, they don't like to see their unconscious energy. Why? Because then they have to work on themselves. Then they have to look at themselves and do the work on themselves rather than pointing fingers to others. Now, I hope you're not from that. Um, you're not coming from that energy. If you're coming from the energy, I want to be a better version of myself. I want to become a stronger person and I want to get into my power. This is amazing because it's going to reveal to you things that you didn't even know about yourself. And that's going to come up. And especially things that you've done to escape in life. Now, what to do is Mars in the fifth house, which is things from the heart, doing things from the heart, doing things that you love to do, enjoying yourself, going out with friends, having a nice meal with your friends um, or with your lover, uh, everything that is playful. So being active with that can help you out of that situation and doing it from the heart, doing things from the heart, having a nice uh, talk and doing something lovely with your children. 
being very active with them, but maybe in a playful way, maybe you go out swimming or whatever it is, um, that is, or, or having a good conversation that might be a bit of a discussion here, but that you know each other in a better way. This can really release a lot and transform a lot of that heart chakra energy. Last but not least, the Pisces. This is happening in the 11th house. Something might come up because of a friend or because of a goal, um, because of a, a group of people that you belong to. Something comes up there. So this is your social circle for sure. But it's out of your control. And the things that you do best to deal with that is to go within. Mars in the fourth house and to be very busy at home. Literally, by um, making sure, whether it is cleaning, rearranging your furniture, whatever it is, but being busy at all, working from home can really help you in dealing with what's going on in your 11th house. So it's sextiling your energy. So it, it's not that it's doom and gloom, not at all. It's um, for the Pisces as a water sign, um, quite good energy actually. and. Um, but remember that this is all about doing the steps for yourself, being active, being your own best parent in a very active way. So what are the steps, the actions that I can take to get emotional security from within and by my own actions and not from looking for safety outside of you? Anyway. This was this full moon. I hope you are going to make it the best moon ever. Thank you so much for watching. The promotion is still going on of the abundance because lots of people are liking it a lot. That 50 minute reading, if you want to check it out, look in the link below. Uh, I'll put that link of my website there. Subscribe and share if you like this and comment. I read all the single comments. So grateful for that as well. Grateful for your support as well. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.